Well, hello, hello, Young and the Restless Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for, let me see what, Thursday, May 11th, 2023, Thursday, May the 11th. Well, Daniel has decided he's going to take matters into his own hands. He um, picks up his keys. He leaves the room because we all know Phyllis gave him a call, even though she didn't say anything. Um, it was her. I don't understand why she felt she couldn't say anything. I don't know. But anyway, um, so we're going to see what Daniel's getting ready to do. Uh, uh, Adam, he uh, gets McCall. You know, he and Victor made their little deal. He has complete autonomy and he wants Sally. So he um, talks to Sally. He tells her how he really knows that this is going to be great. She's going to be great for the job. They could do some phenomenal, phenomenal things with this company together. And he's, you know, just wanting to offer her this opportunity. So Sally says, look, I'm going to have to think about it, right? I have to think about this. I don't know. So meanwhile, Nick, uh, Sally's in the park when Adam calls her and Nick comes up. And so Nick says, hey, is that some good news? Think about what? Talk to Chloe about what? I'm thinking, yeah, eavesdrop much, Nick? Eavesdrop? And she goes, uh, he goes, so Jill accepted your you know, proposal. And she goes, no, not really. It's an indefinite hold uh, where the Chancellor Winter's uh, project is concerned. And he goes, well, oh, sorry to hear that. Then what else you know, could you have been talking about? You know, and she goes, well, I need to tell you something. Adam's offered me a job. And Nick said, what? Yeah, he has him a call. And he wants me to help, you know, revitalize that company. And he goes, that's just Adam's manipulations and blah, blah, blah. Don't believe that. And he goes on and on. He goes, I offered to, to lend you money to start a business in anything you wanted to do. And she goes, yeah, but this is not a loan, Nick. Adam is offering me this opportunity, this job, so that I can do a good, I, I can do a good job. He and I worked well together, you know, but I just know the Adam, there's always strings attached. He's going to make it for much more. So, you know, Nick pretty much who doesn't make decisions for anybody. Yeah, Nick makes a lot of decisions for people, right? So he pretty much lets Sally know he's against it. You know, he, he doesn't feel she should do it because Adam has ulterior motives aside from the fact that you might do a good job. Not might. She did a good job as CEO of Newman Media, even though she was constantly distracted. She and Adam did a very good job at Newman Media together. So we'll see where that goes. Now, Jack wants to talk to Ashley because, you know, he and Ashley have been at it back and forth. I get so sick of seeing their scenes of them in their house. And Ashley is like the broken record, right? And so she goes, goes, can I just talk to you for a few minutes, Ash? So she goes, I have a few minutes. And she goes in his office and he says, I, I, I don't like this. I don't like our relationship the way it is. And she goes, well, I don't like it either, Jackie. And he goes, you know, I, I figured out. It's, it's not so much you're mad at me and Diane. It's you're actually upset at yourself. And she goes, please, Jackie, please continue on telling me exactly how I feel, <laughs> you know? And he goes, really, this is all about you and Tucker. You know, you should not be involved with Tucker, you know, and you don't want to uh, face your own feelings. So you're projecting onto me and Diane. And Ashley's looking at him like that has to be the most ridiculous thing I ever heard of because whether Tucker was in the picture with Ashley or not, she hated Jack and he, she hated Jack and Diane together. And I thought, well, Jack, that's pretty short-sighted. No, you're project, projecting your hatred of Tucker and you want Ashley to hate him. See, here's the thing. You don't want the pot being Ashley calling the kettle black. But you, the kettle, want to call the pot black. Hmm. 
actually in reality, neither one of them need to be with either of their perspectives who they're fighting for and champion. Ashley's not champion for Tucker. Ashley's using Tucker really as a dig against Jack. However, Tucker ultimately is not going to be good for Ashley. He never has been. Diane is going. Once this little crisis is over, because ever since she came to town, it's been one thing after another. First was one lie after another being exposed. Well, all those lies aren't done. All those lies of exposure are not done. Once she gets out of this crisis, there's going to be the next set of lies. And I can't wait for that to happen, right? So either way, of course, that Jack's version of, of feelings, Ashley's feelings did not fly. And Ashley ends up storming out of the office, right? So meanwhile, at the house, Tucker's talking to Diane. And Tucker's saying, hey, you know what? Uh, I can help you out of this situation. She's like, well, what do you mean? And he goes, you are causing a lot of pain to Jack and your son. And then as an extension, your grandson. I could give you enough money, Diane, and you could just run. Get on out of here. Disappear, but this time stay gone. And she was like... Uh, no. And she goes, what you feel by, by doing this, you are really doing this for Ashley. She goes, do you think if I did do it, this would get Ashley in your bed? Is that what this is about? You think she would finally fully, uh, accept you? It's not going to happen, Tucker. And Tucker's just looking at her like, no, that ain't it, but okay. Right. So now Daniel sees Summer and he's talking to Summer and he's trying to get Summer to, you know, talk to him, to, to let him know, look, we have to, still, we got to tell. And she's like, no, don't you see with telling without having a plan to bring mom back is going to ruin everything. And if you tell that I knew you are blowing up my marriage in the process. So see, Summer already knows she's risking her marriage by going on this path. She truly is, right? She knows it. So she's, you know, talking angrily at him and he's trying to get her to see reason. She goes, he goes, how could you live with letting someone go to jail that did not commit the crime? You know, this is your husband's mother, Summer. Oh, Summer's like, look, we need to find a way we could bring mom home. Then we can worry about getting Diane off, you know? And Chance is out in the outer area of Crimson Lights looking through the window at them. Like looking at their interaction with each other. Like something's going on with that brother and sister. And Sharon is at the counter wiping the same spot for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> Listen, to, looking at them. Now, she can't really hear, but she's looking at the intenseness of them, them interacting with each other. Because when Summer came in, Sharon was not at the counter. Her brother, Daniel, was sitting at a table. Daniel was actually about to text her saying, we need to talk. And he saw her come in. She didn't see him at first, but then when she's looking around like, hey, where's Sharon or where's somebody to get me my coffee? She sees him. Well, she's getting ready to turn and walk right out of there. She's like, I don't want to see you, Daniel. So Sharon then comes in summer, summer and stops her. And she goes, are you leaving so soon? She goes, yeah, I forgot something. She says, well, look, before you go, there's something I want to give you. And she looks at her like, what? And she goes, a hug. So she hugs summer and she tells her, you know, she's so sorry for, you know, what Summer's going through and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And then she goes, and let me give you a cup of coffee too. So as Sharon is getting ready to kind of move to get the coffee, Daniel's already up kind of behind Summer, says, Summer, I need to speak to you. So I think Sharon already gives Summer the coffee or the coffee pretty much becomes irrelevant that's when Daniel and Summer sit down and talk. And of course, they don't agree about anything, right? Um, 
So we'll see. Chance has now got them on his radar. He does. He's wondering what's what what is this? What could be happening? What's going on? Now he's paying more and more attention to it. Right? So then we have Sally talking to Chloe and kind of trying to fill her out about, you know, going into business, working at McCall. And Chloe's like, wait a minute. You have Nick offering you a loan to start your own company and you turn him down. Why would you go into business with Adam? And so Chloe said, well, for one, it's different. For two, Adam and I work very well together. And for one, I'm not with Adam. I don't want to have Nick's loan in between our relationship, you know? And so Chloe says, no, it, it, but you'd rather have Adam. She goes, for one thing, Chloe, I would be working. I would be getting a paycheck for a job that I'm going to do very, very well. You know, I'm not going to be beholding to Adam for this job. I'm going to do very well in this job. And Adam knows I can do well in any job I want to, that I, I, I set out to do. So Chloe ends up telling her, you know what? You do this. I do not want to be in business with Adam ever again. She goes, don't you remember what it was like before? And Chloe says, yeah. I mean, Sally says, yeah. And it wasn't that bad at all, Chloe. Like she's thinking, what are you remembering? Right? She goes, the problem was Chelsea in the mix. It was never Adam. It was Chelsea that caused a lot of that friction. And so Chloe's just looking because that, that is true. It was never Adam. Adam gave them Clark card blanche. He never even got in the middle of their stuff. He was just trying to navigate the Chelsea Sally situation, right? So Chloe's like, no, I, I'm out. You have to do it without me. So now Adam's in the park and Adam um, is walking by and Nick goes, Adam. And he stops and he goes, hey. And he goes, you can't help yourself, can you? And he goes, I can't help notice what a beautiful day it is. And so Nick says, no, you can't help insinuating yourself into Sally's life. You can't offering her a job to work, you know, at McCall. And, Ad and Adam said, well, for one, Sally would be very, she would do very well in any position in McCall. Sally's very talented. And she and I work uh, well together. And so uh, uh, Nick goes, but we both know it has nothing to do with that and everything to do with you getting Sally back. And so Adam said, you know what, Nick? Is your relationship with Sally that fragile? And Nick is just looking at him like, what are you talking about? Is it that fragile, Nick? He says, because, you know, I'm offering Sally this position on her merit. Now, one thing I could say, and I want to know, he goes, you know what, Nick? You like Sally. You like her. Well, I love her. Okay. There is a difference. And Nick's just looking at Adam. And I thought, Adam, I don't know why you just said that. I don't know why you said it because you want to know what your brother's going to do. He's going to propose to her. I'm just saying. Because now he's going to want to one-up you. And then that's when he's going to start really starting to influence Sally once they're married. Hmm, we shall see. But pretty much that was it. That was it for um, today's episode, which was Thursday, May the 11th on The Young and the Restless. I will be back for another daily recap 
uh, for Friday the 12th. 